Hello and welcome to the video. In this video we'll be looking at the Voss Norwegian Farmhouse Ale. The photograph you see here is naturally of Voss. You may also be aware of the mineral water that you see here that's sold all over the world for half the price that we can buy it for in Norway. <laughs> when people in Norway think of Voss they think of skiing, sheep's heads, yeah that's the thing, and also beer. Just recently I went to the Bergen International Whiskey and Beer Festival. One of the brewery's stands that I visited while I was there was that of Voss Brewery, or Briggery, as it's said here in Norwegian. I got chatting to a couple of the good people there and was telling them about my adventures with uh, Kveikis so far. I was aware that the Kveikis they have in Voss is vastly different to everything else and my god, when I tried three of their different brews, I thought, my word, this is amazing. I really have to brew myself some of this. So after quite a long conversation, I found that I was uh, able to go back and actually start making a recipe that would suit this type of kveik. So the thing that's different about these Voss uh, kveik beers is that they're, for a start, dark, definitely more complex, and definitely a lot sweeter. The recipe that I'm about to present to you could certainly be used with a Belgian style of yeast. It will obviously give you a different type of beer in certain aspects, but it would certainly work. I would certainly urge everyone to get hold of Quake yeast though. Keep calm and just do it. So here is my recipe for this Voss Farmhouse Ale. Note that this is a 10 litre batch and I'll be using the Grainfather small pipe work for this. Naturally, if you use a different type of yeast to me, then the estimated ABV can potentially go up or down. You will also note here a boil time of 180 minutes. It's also worth mentioning that I'm using modern mashing times, but um, traditionally a mash for this type of beer would take four hours. Also note the flaked oats in this are unmalted and represent almost 15% of the brew. This is very characteristic of style. We also have some very interesting speciality grain here, special bee, coffee malt, rye malt and smoked malt. The use of these would certainly give a very interesting flavour to this beer. I'm also using dark candy sugar to give this beer a further complexity. In terms of hops, I've chosen to go with uh, first wort hopping uh, to give the beer an extra smoothness in terms of its bitterness and there are some finishing hops too for extra flavours. Many thanks to Dag Jürgensen from Voss Brewery for his kind assistance in uh, making this recipe and sharing some of his methods. Really great. So it's now the day before the brew and you can see that I've been out collecting juniper again. The method with the juniper has actually changed now for me since speaking to Dag and the advice that I got is as follows. Make preference to the thinner branches rather than the thicker ones. Preheat the water to 80 degrees C, add your juniper branches to this as thickly as possible and then switch off the power and let this infuse overnight. So all of my juniper is now in and I'm going to give it a squishing down with this uh, plastic mash paddle that never seems to get used until now. Okay so it's now the next morning and it's time to start doughing in. Please do note the fairly fine crush that I have here and the fact that I'm adding this gradually and stirring as I go. Here are the flaked oats that I'm using. Like I said before, these are totally unmalted and I bought these from a local supermarket and they were branded as large in size. This advice was based upon the information that I got from Darg at Voss Brewery. I did not crush or mill these oats in any way. I added them to the mash, basically by the handful, every time I added some grain. OK, so it's now time to start the mash. OK, so you'll notice from a mass schedule point of view, this is a very standard two-step at 65 degrees for 60 minutes, and mashing out at 75 degrees for 10. The thing is, this isn't a very traditional mash for a Voss beer. 
Most false beers are actually mashed in at between 69 and 70 degrees, and this is part of the style. What this does is this creates a wort that is less fermentable, and thus you have more residual sugars left in the brew. Again, this was at Darg's advice that I actually do a lower mash temperature for this one because of the variety of different malts that I'm using. So mashing is almost finished now and it's time to actually put some of this wort into this jar so that we can create our starter. I then added the Kvaik yeast directly into this jar and put it into the fermentation vessel that I have here that is heated to 39 to 40 degrees C. Naturally it's essential to make sure that the water you have uh, in the fermentation vessel if you use this method for heating covers the entirety of the wort. I then use more of the juniper branch infused water to do my sparge. Entry this was done slowly and evenly by hand. As I'm sure none of you have forgotten, least of all me, this one had a three hour boil. Periodically I had to check the starter and uh, open it up to relieve any pressure in the jar. As you can see here we have a start of a fermentation. It was actually very fast to do this too. This is uh, certainly some powerful stuff. Okay so towards the end of the boil now and um, what I've done is I've put the counterflow chiller up on a chair on top of a box and I'm running the boiling hot wall through it. Now I haven't actually put any cold water into the counterflow chiller but you can see the temperature has dropped. For this reason it's important that you actually pause the timer and you can do this in the smartphone app here. Once boiling temperatures has resumed I then press the resume button. I then actually got some of the boiling hot wort and added it to my candy sugar and gave it a good stir just to help it pre-dissolve before it hit my brewing system. I then added the candy sugar partially dissolved mix to the far hand side of the grain father opposite where the pump is and then stir it at the bottom there. By the time the boil was finished this was how my starter was looking. Very ready. Okay so the pitch temperature of this yeast is 39 degrees C. When I was chilling this wort down to this amount and trying to stabilize it there I found that the best thing to do is to juggle with the cold water tap. So for certain points the cold water was on, but after a point this was generally for a second or two just to stop it going above a certain temperature and to bring it back down. It was a constant juggle of temperature, but by the time I had emptied all of the wort into my fermenter I was very very happy with the temperature that I got to. I was at around 38. Because of the high fermentation temperatures that need to be maintained here, I'm actually using two heat belts on this, and they made short work of gaining that extra one degree. After speaking to William at the uh, Cornwall and Craig Forum, I decided to actually increase the fermentation temperature of this one to 42.5 to get extra fruity flavours. A full fermentation wasn't long to follow, and this was the scene. What I noticed though is that in terms of airlock activity there wasn't really a great deal but an awful lot of Crawson. Here are some close-up shots so that you can admire the Crawson of this fantastic Fosquake also. Day one is actually brew day in case you're wondering. These are added in time order so you can see how it changes. You will note because the Quake yeast works so fast the changes day to day are very dramatic. So there you go, that rounds up this particular Kvek uh, brew day. For those of you that haven't tried this yet, I'd really recommend it. And I really hope you enjoyed this video and found it interesting and useful. So if you did like this video, then please do go ahead and like it on YouTube. This really helps me out and allows the videos to be seen by a wider audience on YouTube. I've got a lot of videos in the pipeline for the future, so if you're interested in uh, seeing what I've got coming up, then please subscribe for future content. If you have any questions on anything that I've covered in this video, or in others, or anything in to do with brewing in general, then please do not hesitate to get in touch. I'm more than happy to help. Until then, happy brewing!